Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. Now in this video I'm going to show you guys how to build a radar guided torpedo. Yes, that's correct. I was having a look at some of my older creations and I found one of the first ever torpedoes that I made here in Stormworks. This is back from 2018 before we had radars and sonars or explosives or even just advanced engines here in game. We had very very basic things like this engine was actually powering this torpedo even though it wasn't connected. So we're going to recreate this, however, we're going to use all the new components. I'm going to take you step by step in how to build your own torpedo. I'm going to show you some very basic functionalities uh, and obviously you can then improve it and add some more features to it. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, so now that we're in the workbench, the first thing we want to start off is going to be by enabling our symmetry mode. And we're going to build a very basic outline of what our actual torpedo is going to look like. So let's go with the length of pretty much about that much. I mean. You can make it as large or as small as you want to. I'm just going to go with something basic like this. So the first and most important part of this creation is going to be the sonar. That is what we're going to use to detect our targets. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could build possibly a uh, GPS guided torpedo, but we're going with fully sonar guided, so we'll go and pick up targets. So we're going to place that here in the front. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a warhead. A warhead is going to allow our creation to actually go and explode. So, I mean, let's go and add one just over here. And just delete one more block here. And there we go. Along with that, we are also going to need some type of propulsion system. So how are we going to make this thing go forwards and backwards? And to do that, we're probably going to just use a small propeller. So let's go at the end here and add a small propeller. So very basic components at the moment. We will also need some batteries. Now, how many batteries you use is up to you. I'm just going to go with a few. Let's go with one or two at the back here. I want to try and keep our weight towards the back because that's where we're going to have our control surfaces or our rudders eventually. Once we've got that on, speaking of control surfaces, that's the next thing we're going to be adding on. So I'm going to be using some control fins. Uh, they are the small ones. Uh, once again, you don't have to use these. You could use whichever ones you want to. This is the one I'm going with at the moment. We're going to go with, uh, let's do a positive facing uh, towards up. So one and two. Okay, so that's going to allow me to go up and down. And now we also need some to go left and right. Okay, so we're going to invert that. Put these on here. Make sure you got arrow facing left, arrow facing left. And same goes underneath here. As you can see, now currently it's negative going left. We want to invert that and put these down here. There we go. We've now got eight control surfaces, two for, actually four for left and right, and four for up and down. So once we've got that, there's a few more things we're going to need. So now that we've got all these components on, these are the very, very bare minimum things that you will need. We're going to start by actually getting this thing to move. Once we get it to move, we're going to get it to actually hold its depth that we tell it to go to. And the next thing we're going to do is going to connect the sonar and tell it to hopefully direct itself and hit a target. So let's start with getting this thing to move. So as you can see, we have the actual thrust here, which is going to come up our pillar. Now we need to add something to that to make it go forwards and backwards. So I'm going to be adding firstly a gearbox. And secondly, we're going to add a, let's do a T piece and add two motors. So we're going to go with the electrical motors. These should be more than enough for it to get us going. Add those on, go to the gearbox, max the gearbox out. Make sure it is facing towards the actual uh, motors here. Make sure it's facing towards. You don't have to actually take that. You could remove it. I just like having it gives you a little bit more speed. We could even add another battery here if we wanted to. Okay, once again, just be careful on how much weight you add to this. Like you would think, oh, we got plenty of space. Let's add another one of these warheads. You could, but the more weight you add, the more motors you'll need, which adds more weight, the more batteries you'll need then, and then the more fin runners you'll need, and so on and so on and so on. Do you want to have a good balance between weight and also the amount of fitness and power and things that you have? Once we've got all that on, we need to build some logic. So let's start with some very basic logic. Let's just get the, the propulsion done. Let's get this thing to just drive forwards. So we're going to use a constant number here. The constant number will tell it, hey, when you spawn in, Put a one on it and tell the motor to turn on and just go full steam ahead very very simple of course we will need to connect the electricity so i'm going to go and do that quickly hold control down by the way to select multiple things without you having to physically drag and drag and drag you can just hold control and select multiple things here it makes it much easier once we've got that in if we spawn this in it should just spawn in and go straight forwards with nothing else now when you spawn this in, you'll notice if I spawn it in here, look at it, it's going to spawn high and then drop way down low, hit the dock and then bounce off. 
To stop that, what you can do is if you just go to uh, the world view, yeah, you can actually see what's going on. You can go down to the move and drag this all the way down. So once it spawns in, it actually spawns in the water, which means it doesn't drop down. It should just go here and then start its move across. You can disable it, spawn it again, and let's go and have a look. There it is. Can you see it's going towards, but it's going down because we haven't got any pitch control at the moment. So let's go and do that. Now, of course, when I click my workbench, nothing's here. That's because the creation is actually out of my workbench already. And here it is on my map. I need to click on it to return it to my workbench. There we go. And then quickly click on the workbench and here it is. So now we're going to create some type of depth hold system. Now, how you want to do this is up to you. I personally recommend that you do a mic controller, make it nice and compact and small. So for the purpose of this video, I'm actually not going to be doing it. I'm going to be using basic logic. So I'm going to be using our basic logic that we have here in Stormworks. I like to do this for a few videos just to keep it very simple and very clean. You guys can then, of course, use that same principle and put it into my controller. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a PID that will allow me to create the depth hold system. I'm going to disable my symmetry and I'm going to place it somewhere on my creation, probably over here. The next thing we're going to need is an altitude sensor. This will allow me to check what our um, distance or height is in the water and above the water and so on. So I'm just going to go and put that over there. The next thing we'll need is some way to turn the PID on and off. Now, the easiest way personally is probably just to use a constant on signal. That way it's always on and it's always working. So we're just going to go there and put it over there. Now we can actually get this all connected up. So we can go over here, turn the PID always on. The next thing we're going to do is our altitude, which is going to be our variable. We then have our PID, which is going out into our fin rudders here at the back. And we need something to set it. So what are we going to set it to? Well, let's go and grab another constant number and maybe let's go and set it to possibly like negative two or negative five. Once again, up to you on what your depth you want it to be. You could create some really cooler systems using more sonars or using more logic uh, to make this thing much cooler. But let's just go with like a negative two for right now. That'll be just below the waterline. Put it as a set point there and in theory, we can now spawn this in and see what happens. Not saying it's going to work straight away. We might need to tweak it. Now, we need to go and put some settings onto our PID controller. Now, what settings you put on is up to you. You will need to play this around with these settings. You can try and use my settings, but once again, it all depends on how much weight you have, how many fin runners you have. This is not a universal setting you can always use. You have to do your own testing and you have to do your own tweaking. Let's go with a very basic setting for now. Let's go with something like 0 0.2 or 0 0.1. Uh, for integral gain, I always do 0 0.001, so four zeros is what I pretty much always use as a standard here. And then for our dampening, I mean, I don't want this thing to be doing dolphin dive, so I'm going to put quite a high dampening force on this, maybe like five. We can maybe increase that or decrease it as we go on. So once we've got those settings on, let's go and spawn it in and let's go and see what happens. As you can see, there it goes. Look, it's going up. It's going up. Oh, look at that. Actually, that's not bad. It is going up and down a little bit more. We can add more dampening to it, but I mean, that's pretty good. Okay, it's far gone now, by the way. And let's bring it back in and let's have one more look at it and let's see what happens. Goes up to negative two, goes down a little bit, goes up a little bit. All right, I mean, that's not bad. We can play around with those settings. Once again, I can't go back to my workbench. I have to open my map, click on my creation, bring it back in and then quickly click on my workbench to get it back. All right, so now we've got it back and our depth hold is pretty much working. It's not perfect, but it, we could spend more time tweaking it, but it is working. Uh, the next thing we can do is our sonar. Now for the sonar, we could in theory just connect a few things up. Now with sonars, how they work is you have a target found. You've also got a target distance. We've got facing your elevation angle, FOV, and signal strength. Now we don't want to focus on most of these things. Some of these things we don't even care about for this tutorial. The only thing we want to focus on is the FOV. So telling it what our field of view currently is. We also want to go and tell it, um, we want to read what our elevation angle is. So this will be the turns on it. As you can see, you've got these little arrows on top. So if we just grab another one of these, you can see there's the arrows on top. That tells it whether the target it found is to the left or to the right. And that's what comes out of the elevation angle. So those are the two, pretty much the only two things we need. I mean, we don't need signal strength. We don't need distance. You could use that distance to create some better logic or some better features on this. Uh, the target found, don't really need it. Uh, facing your, don't really need it. 
So the only two things, once again, we're focusing on is FOV and our elevation angle. Now, what we're going to do for the FOV is we're just going to connect, for example, do we have like a one here? I think we do. Yeah, just connect the one over to it. That means it's got a very wide field of view. It will just max itself out to 0 0.125. The elevation angle, in theory, you could connect that directly over to your left and right, which is here at the back. However, we probably are going to change that because that gives it to you in turns, which is probably not the best thing. Let's just see how this reacts firstly, even if it goes in the right direction, and then we can obviously maybe change the sensitivity of it. So let's go and spawn in. Let's see what happens. There it goes. There it goes. Is it turning at all? not really it's not really turning it's going actually more left than anything so let's go into it now we're going to change some settings on it once again open our map bring it back to the workbench click on the workbench okay let's change some things i'm going to grab a function block and we're going to use my function blocks i always love using function blocks so we're going to grab one of those we're going to go onto it and we're going to x times six maybe four let's do six and we're going to take that elevation angle Put it into my function block and then go into my fin riders or fin controls at the back. So it's pretty much taking whatever that is giving it in turns and timesing it by six and then sending it out to my fin riders. Let's see how that works now. Jump around here, watch it. Where is it going? Okay, it's going right. Ooh, okay, hold on. That's pretty good. Did it hit? I think it hit. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. So now, let me just bring this back in the workbench quickly. There we go. So that was pretty good, actually. I mean, maybe let's make it more sensitive. Let's bring it to like eight. Uh, and that should work. Now, you saw that when it hit, it didn't actually explode this warhead. So we probably want to add some type of impact sensor on it. I mean, you could use the built-in impact sensors that are on these warheads. Uh, I don't want to risk it. So I'm probably just going to put one over here and click on it change the settings i mean make it like two or three or four uh, that way it won't explode when you spawn it in connect it directly over to detonate and i mean spawn it in let's see what happens now so where is it let's follow it let's go home key and let's follow this thing so there it goes it's not angling itself towards the boat let's go above the water Ooh, look at that oh <laughs> hit in the front so that was probably a little bit too sensitive for me so let's just bring this back here now you'll notice that went and despawned. It's no longer on our map because it exploded. So that's how Stormworks handles destruction and obviously freeing up physics and things. So we have to go back into our workbench and we're going to just have to go and do an autosave. So it did work. I want to reduce the sensitivity of this maybe down to like six. Uh, let's go and test it again. And let's see what happens. So here it goes. There it goes spawned in. Oh, it actually hits the bottom. Oh, that's interesting. Autosave. Let's so make sure we do have an impact sensor. You can actually increase this. Maybe you can increase it to like 20 if you want to or 15. That way when it spawns and it doesn't instantly just damage something. So there we go. Cool. There it goes off. There it goes off. There it goes off. Okay, that uh, sensitivity is not bad. I mean, it's still towards the front of the ship. I mean, I'm not complaining. It's still hitting, which is the main thing. I'm guessing that's where the radar signature is that I had found. So, I mean, that's pretty good. Let's do another autosave. So, yeah, I mean, you guys can carry on tweaking it. As I said, if you want to change the sensitivity of the left and right, you can go over to the function block and change it here. We can make it times by four. We can make it times by three. It's up to you. Uh, and then also with the PID settings for the um, depth hold. So if you wanted to go to, let's say I set it to negative two, we could have set it to negative one or negative five. I mean, it's once again, you can play around the settings. Batteries, once again, I think two probably three is more than enough and if you want to make it look better i definitely recommend you use a mic controller instead of all this little logic that way you can build something nice and long you could actually even make this shorter to be honest uh let's just go ahead and make it somewhat decible uh decent and make it look quite nice uh so when i mean quite nice i mean acceptable there we go sure and then at the front we can do like maybe a red that makes it or even a yellow let's make it look like my one of my old ones i think i had yellow in the front i'm correct there we go done so after you've gone and added your blocks on and you've done some painting you might find that when you spawn this in your creation actually doesn't perform like how it used to perform that's because you've added a whole bunch of buoyancy 
to the creation. Now to get through that you could add some more weight blocks to the creation. That way it was sink a little bit lower in the water. As you can see I didn't even know where mine went at the moment. I think it didn't even hit the target. So we can bring this back into the workbench, maybe add a few weight blocks on there, maybe change the sensitivity of my steering. There's a few things you can do here. I mean, for the purpose of this video right now, I'm just gonna go and add like some weight blocks underneath it so you guys can see how much of a difference that might make. Just make sure that your center gravity is quite low uh, and of course that you didn't add too much buoyancy by adding all those blocks in early on. So there it goes there. Okay, still needs a little bit more tweaking. But you can definitely see it is working it is not however going to hit that target so we might want to change our sensitivity oh no it did there we go yeah it did last minute it went and hit the target there so guys that is a very basic torpedo using the sonar gear and stormax i mean i had a lot of fun playing with this and learning how they you know how much has changed since i built this what pretty much three years ago uh even more now i can't even remember so yeah, I mean, it's been a lot of fun learning how the new ones work. I mean, it, Stormworks has come a long way. Uh, so hopefully this tutorial has been somewhat useful for you guys uh, and you've been able to follow along. As I said, just keep an eye on those key things. Like for example, make sure you configure your PID correctly. You tweak it as you need it. Uh, once again, my settings are not universal. You can't use them for everything. You will need to tweak your own settings. Whether your creation is heavier or lighter, you have more fins and less fins etc. There's a lot of things that do change how torpedoes work in Stormworks. As I said, this is a very basic tutorial and I'd love to hear you guys comments if you would like to see maybe a more advanced one. Maybe I can show you guys how to create a GPS guided one and then maybe once it gets close to its target it switches to sonar. Uh, we could also do some missiles if you guys prefer. We can do some big missiles here in Stormworks and show you guys how to get uh, radar guided missiles although we've done a tutorial on that or small ones at least uh, but we can do some gps guided missiles for example let me know in the comments below and if you have enjoyed this video smash the like button hit the subscribe button until next one we will see you then